Hello friends and welcome to another video. So um, it's been a while and the reason is I've been focused on a different uh, project um, but I'll try to put out some videos um, apart from my amp experimentation. Um, I'll also be um, redoing my speaker probably and going for a higher efficiency because um, I think that's the key to good audio is, is get your efficiency of the speaker up as much as possible. But today I want to just look at one of my amps and amps are great because I think they're very underrated. They're often, I would say, the weak point in your system because they're the thing that can actually get the most and it also, they need to be very attuned to the speaker that you're working with. And um, yes, and, and, and the gains that I these days can realize with using better components and better tubes, I would say, but, but having tubes in their optimal condition, the gains that you can make with these are quite astounding, I would say. Um, and, and it just shows, shows have shown me that, that my bottleneck is not even my flawed speaker because it is flawed in some ways and I won't go into it at the moment, but the, the extra level that I can gain in the amp is, is, is is quite quite astounding really um, and, and you can even improve on that even despite flaws in, in, in the speaker um, which is quite interesting um, so I always thought this chicken and egg thing where you know do you need a good speaker to develop a good amp or a good amp to develop the speaker um, but I think you just need to develop a, a, a speaker that doesn't have any real flaws and then that, that will allow you to develop a really good um, amp you don't need a very good amp to develop your speaker because the, the flaws will be quite obvious however you can get very confused between where a problem comes from for example what i noticed is that um, some tubes i was driving too hard and then you get some harshness elements in that and then with a the compression driver it will just mercilessly show you those um, compression and it's not a problem of the compression driver which i thought was at first the thing that it would be ringing no it was actually a problem in my amp design so the high efficiency units that i'm using my amp is reasonably efficient it's probably about in effectiveness probably 100 dec decibels per watt on one meter um, i would guess at the moment and um, it is quite mercilessly in, in showing you the amp so i've also heard some stings in this amp but it does a lot of things right this amp and um, the circuit is very interesting so I want to go into the circuit so you have some understanding about why this, the, I'm using the circuit the benefits of it um, and now before I get into it um, this was actually based on a question so I'll read you out a question in a second now notice this, this amp is not a beginner's thing if you have never built an amp like a normal one stage amp or a normal two stage amp this is not the project for you just don't do it it, it uses higher voltages before because of its design and um, yeah there's just some complications in there that I wouldn't t tackle un unless you actually maybe just already has have built a DHT amp so a directly heated tube amp um, and, and, and got to grips with it that's that's who this is for if you're a beginner this is really not the project for you you can it can kill it can probably kill you so don't do it so disclaimers out of the way let's get into the this amp so the reason I, I'm making this video is a because I wanted to make a video anyway and post something after having not posted much recently so the question was from Tiki 7345 and he says bloody hell I enjoyed that this is the Frank Sinatra playing over the 801 1624 amp you've got the message for, for sure I'd love to know more about the amplifier so let's delve into the history first and the circuit so the reason the circuit type that I'm using is this. It was based on this idea, which is from, uh, well, it says Thunderstone uh, Audio, but really this is Torsten Leash. So Torsten, Torsten Leash posts quite, you can find him on uh, DIY Audio. Uh, he's worked for um, iFi. Uh, he's, he's created very high level uh, CD players. He's experimented with Lost and shared his experience on Audio Asylum and also DIY Audio and probably other forums. Very well known designer. What I think he did is he took a circuit. 
this is a direct connect circuit. So what you see is there's no coupling here between the driver tube and the output tube. Now, a lot of direct connect circuits are not stable. And this was looked at, I found in 2000, May 2000 by John Broski. So um, he runs the TubeCat journal. Still, you can subscribe to him on the Patreon and so on. He comes out every week or so or every month with, with an article. He writes something about um, designing amps. And, and so he's, he looked at this and he said, well, the Loft and White direct connect scheme has problems because, and he, you can see it here, if you have this circuit and this tube, the driver tube, loses connection with the socket somehow, or the, the filament supply, if this was a DHT, is, isn't working. What happens is that when this tube is missing, you can see what happens to the audio, the output tube, is that the grid level has the same voltage as the base, which means you'll have zero volt on your grid, which means it will start conducting maximally. It will pump a lot of and it will probably blow up your tube it is extremely likely it will blow up your output tube if you leave this in for any period of time so then he started so here in 2000 may 2000 oh, he actually came up with a couple of safer ideas to do this and he revisited it in 2015. But here, this is the first thing I can find, May 2000, where he has the schematic that we are also using. However, Torsten Leach improved on this circuit. So I think it is a massive improvement and it, and it also, I think, um, prevents some of the things often associated with um, single-ended amps that are too soft and they're not dynamic enough and so then people start grabbing for push-pull amps and um, I think this circuit in my experience for me has removed the need to look at push-pull um, because that introduces a distortion spectra that is just colder and harsher because the, the second harmonic has removed, been removed and that leads to a spectrum of, of um, harmonics that is not natural to your ear and you will always hear this um, now if you grew up with push pull amps you you th you you might be completely attuned to it just as you can be attuned to a high bass both of these things have happened to me because i've i've ran um quad esl 55s for a long time on a beard push pull amp and so i also got used to that type of sound and it is very it takes ye it almost takes years to get get used to a different sound. It's very hard to actually uh, remove yourself from elevated bass levels. Uh, it's very hard to remove yourself from um, push-pull sound or maybe a solid state sound. It, it will, will take you a long time. You really have to, in my sense, once you really want a certain balance in the, in the sound and you want a natural something complete and natural or something and once you start preferring that then, then these circuits start making sense. But what I noticed with his Thurston Lish's um, design is that it is highly dynamic. And I think one of the reasons is because he uses an ultra path connection for both the driver and the output tube, which makes the return loop for the music signal here to the output transformer and here to the driver. Well, it makes the, the return path pretty, pretty low. Um, and not only that, I actually think because of the way we got a choke here that even the current, if it goes higher and lower, part of it can be really well absorbed also by the choke here. Um, so it's almost like this has been put into a very, in a circuit that can move vol um, currents and voltages really quickly. And, and, and you hear that in the sound, it is actually quite dynamic and I haven't even scraped the bottom probably of it. Um, and one of the things that I do use is DC link capacitors in, in these functions everywhere. So DC link capacitors are designed to have extremely low inductance, which means they can deliver peak, peak current really quickly without any um, resistance. Also the resistance in it is on the level of something like 3 milliohms with no inductance to speak of. So it means that these things can 
charge and discharge extremely fast, um, leading to that dynamic sound. So one of the other things is this circuit is also sort of known as a direct reactance drive or the free lunch from Jeremy Epstein. And all these circuits came out after I think Broski's article. I, I haven't seen it before, but I might be wrong. So let's have a look at this circuit. So what it actually does is it also, the nice thing also about it is you only need one B plus supply because the driver actually get fed by the current that has gone through the first driver tube and then it gets flattened out with this choke here and with this capacitor gets put into a stable uh, stable supply again so it gets reused some of the current so we've got 80 milliamps flowing here and then 36 actually goes through the driver tube so 44 milliamps actually goes directly to ground and, and makes it return at least the DC signal makes it return pot through the, the through the filtering supply um, here some of the current actually follows this path and it and it provides the B plus for the driver tube now the only price to Jeremy Epstein called it a free lunch but it's not so because you, you get a free power supply in a way but it's not really that because you actually need a higher B plus and this is the reason why I said this is not for beginners because as you can see here 650 volt now I'm using 550 volt in my circuit I'll come to that in a second but that is the idea of this circuit uh, very short AC music signal return loops um, quite a simple circuit only one B plus so you can pour all your effort in in making this um, ripple free get a very nice thing and then uh, use the rest here it's two tubes only and that's one of the reasons I started this amp was actually to, to see if I could manage with two tubes. Now I, I just couldn't because the gain of the two DHTs is still not enough. And um, let's have a look at the gain structure to set the plan for this and then we'll go to my actual circuit. So when I start a new amp I always sort of plug in my uh, spreadsheet and in the spreadsheet I've got my transformers with all its output. Um, so I can sort of assign everything to the filament supply, make sure what I'm going to use for what. It's the, the planning, how you're going to map your hardware to drive your tubes to provide all the power. And I look at the gain concept. So he here's the gain concept here. And um, so let's have a look at that. So the gain concept is uh, I determined that I wanted to be able to um, put 34 volts on the grid of the 1624 that's what I designed for so partly this will run actually um, because its bias will be I think about 28 volts so 6 volts it could actually be in class A2 territory um, but being directly connected and be in the 801 running at a decent current I think it can handle that quite um, very decently so 34 volts at the grid of the 1624 which means if I had the 801A as driver um, with its actual gain of 7.8 I would need 4.3 4.4 volts at the grid of the 801 now my phone stage can deliver that but all the other equipment can't actually deliver that and this is peak voltage is not RMS so peak voltage peak voltage and if we then use a step up I get it to 20 uh, 1 to 2 step up 2 to um, I need 2.3 volts at the at the step up and that translates into 1.6 volts RMS input which is still not enough for some of my devices but generally they all can deliver that but if the recording is a bit lower you know not recorded at a high level it still creates a problem so it is all a bit critical but it was a way for me I, I knew that a four times step up wouldn't work with my system. It just doesn't drive the 801 well. So I went for a two times step up, which is still not ideal, but it, it works. And um, and I, I could at least stick to, to two stages in this amp and not make it a three stage amp as I now have done, done later. So then I've got this thing, which is a whole spreadsheet here, which I plug in the operating points and the amps and it will spill me out all the resistor values that I need to do. I'll show you that in the schematic. I also look at um, the transformer that I use. So I plug in these numbers and then I can see in the output transformer where is the minus 1 dB point, where is the minus 3 dB point. Um, for the choke that you saw, so the loading choke, let's go back here. So 
this one, this choke here, to determine that size because the unfortunately the 801A has a quite high plate impedance at the, where I run it, how I run it, it's probably about 5000 ohms. So the choke that I had available was 168 Henry, so that actually gives me a minus 3 dB point at 4.3 Hertz. So it's well under this, but these things are cumulative. So, um, so this will both will degrade the low performance a little bit. So um, this is not too bad. So I'm probably, I think my, my minus 1 dB point will probably be a bit around 25, 26 Hertz or something with these two things combined. Now here's the actual gain. So let's then jump into my, so after I've done this, I know the schedule. So now let's plug all these values that I derived from the spreadsheet. I can actually put them in this schematic. And this is the actual schematic that I used with the voltages that I used. So I used the Lundahl input transformer. Um, I just put enough bias. So, oh, wait, wait a moment. So in this gain structure, what I usually do, not for the output tube, but for anything else, I'm making sure that the bias that I put on this is at least twice the value. So I'm trying to make this, for example, I want about eight and a half volts as bias on the 801A to just to make sure that I still got like a 6 dB headroom in signal to to cope with the planned 4.4 volts input on its thing. So I ideally go 4.4 times 2 is 8.8 .8 volt bias. Now I, I, I skimmed on it a little bit, I think, because I put 11.5 volts here as filament bias. So that's different from Torsten's um, schedule. But I'm using filament bias here. Uh, this is DC, so very clean DC it needs here. So I put about 11.5 volts on, which makes the bias about 7.5 volts. Um, it's just what I had available because I'm only working with a 10 volt um, supply um, on my filament transformer. So input transformer, filament supply here, 175 volts, 50 milliamps, 180, 186 Henry choke. Um, this also provides a lot of the bias for the 1624. And then I've got a small variable uh, pot here to um, tune it in. This is two 33 ohm uh, resistors just to actually um, make sure that the filament voltage that goes here um, doesn't run through much to here. So there's the 1624, it runs at 28 milliamps. Um, the voltage here is 550 volts. So really, if you then look what is over the tube, it's about, I think about 320 volts that is over the tube. Um, it's by the way, connected up in uh, triode mode. You could maybe try ultra linear as well, um, but I did it as a triode. Um, here's the ultra path cap. And by the way, these values are just because what I've got available in DC links. So um, that's why I use these values. This can probably be lower. Um, this is probably scaled correctly. Output transformer. Here's the dropper resistor, which um, creates the voltage over here. So 30 milliamps goes over here, 15 milliamps of the 28. So it splits 15, 13. So this design then, um, there's quite a bit of current. So 50 milliamps also, if this tube goes into class A2 and it, it starts conducting several milliamps um, through the grid, I think the 801 here within, the, within this circuit can actually quite easily deal with it. I, I, I didn't hear any issues with that. Um, so the problems of this circuit, I think the 801A, based on a later experiment that I did with a lower impedance tube, it's too high of an impedance to drive the 1624 um, correctly. Um, I, I felt it was just a bit off, there was a bit of higher order components that were just not gelling, even though it sounds pretty good in the video. Um, I wasn't totally happy with it. And same with the 801A through this input transformer. Um, I found, so that's the weakness of this thing. Um, I think if you put maybe more effort in it, maybe get it running at a higher current, you might be able to um, improve it. But I found it a bit, um, maybe if you have increased the current a little bit and put a, um, and you have a lower impedance drive that can actually drive this circuit, you'll be fine. You can e maybe even go up. Uh, I've seen many people do it, but you need a very low impedance driver for, um, 
um, equipment driving this amp and then you might be fine but uh, I just heard for it both later on I put an EL33 which has a gain of uh, 20 but it's an indirectly heated so I could drop this and it sounded much better but still not a hundred percent I still hadn't tamed this one exactly um, I don't know exactly the reason but in my experience the way I now hear music I don't want any technicalities to interrupt my music experience and so this still did it needed more work so um, be warned when you have this circuit now why I'm explaining this circuit you said well if you say this that's very disappointing because you know it's not even a good amp it is a very high level amp but it needs to be improved upon somehow um, you could also replace this with an indirectly heated tube that has quite a bit of power, say a 6S45P or something. You could, there's, there's options that you could use here. Um, use quite a low impedance indirectly heated tube and you'll have a very good amp for not much money probably in this schematic. Uh, it, it is actually a really nice uh, combo that you can use here. Um, and you don't have to still go into like 650, 700 volt um, territory or so to, to work with different tubes. So um, very much an option. Now the, the uh, hello Millie. Now the other reason why I mentioned it, this is because this circuit I actually used also for my next amp. So where I use a three stage amp, what is really happening is that instead of the output transformer here, there's an interstate that drives the final tube. So it's the same circuit. You can use the same technology, the same setup, but then add a third stage. So instead of an output transformer, you'll be dealing with a um, an interstate here, which drives the final tube. And I find that it's, it's, it's a really excellent way of minimizing the influence of coupling here. So you actually, even though you've got a three stage amp, you will only have to deal with one interstate and because it happens so late in the circuit, it actually, the influence minimizes because if you have the influence here, this sound will be amplified many times. And so the influence of this input, anything going wrong here will cascade through to your end result amplified. So when you move that problem to the end, um, you will actually end up a lot better because the influences only get amplified by your output tube, which probably amplifies only like to four times or something. So the, the, you minimize its impact and you, um, yes, you need a, a, a quite a good interstage, but I'd still say that the, the, that, that is as a whole solution a much better, um, it's just a very nice combo. So you can use the techniques that I just showed you also in three stage amps and to me they produce really good results so um anyway that was it on this amplifier i hope you enjoyed this video and um i hope this all recorded well and um thank you for watching thank you for watching all the way through and i'll hope to catch you in the next video and i hope um let's have a look to you that you um that this uh, was somewhat informative for you and you got some ideas out of it and um yeah let me know how you went with it if you have any more questions, um, do post them on some of my videos. I generally read all the comments and um, I might get back to you in, in the form of a video or a reply. Um, as I said, thank you for watching and all the best in your audio adventures and catch you next time. Bye bye.